Hi there, this is Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and in this video tutorial I will be showing you how I painted this magical snowman. I did this on an 11 inch by 14 inch canvas and this was a mess up painting, practice painting that I did a while back. I painted a solid coat of Mars black paint over it so you can do the same. Just find a canvas that you no longer like the painting anymore or it was a mess up, throw a coat of black paint over it and you're good to go. This is a black um, canvas painting design. I will be using three different brush sizes. So this is a three quarter inch flat wash brush. I'll also be using a number eight round brush and a number four round brush. Um, these are Princeton Velvet Touch brushes. I will link to them in the post if you're watching this on YouTube. I'll link to it in the materials list um, description. And if you're watching from um, my website, I'll be listing it in the materials section. So we're going to go ahead and get started um, with the three quarter inch flat wash brush. The background of this painting has a very simple northern lights thing going on in the sky and the snowman is going to be situated on a hill so we're actually going to paint the hill first and the northern lights second so the hill is going to kind of give us a um, understanding of where the ground is and where the sky is going to be so i'm going to load my brush in some water and pat it dry and grab that titanium white and I'm going to paint this hill on the bottom of my canvas so it's a kind of a curved shape hill and can't really tell you exactly how high this hill is but uh, maybe three or four inches high um, it doesn't really matter you can make yours higher or lower but this is going to tell us where that um, where the ground is and where the sky is going to be so when we do our northern lights we know uh, where to paint them the northern lights were done using the dry brush technique and it's just this big wavy stroke in the sky and so I'm going to load some white and kind of wipe it off a bit knowing that there's not a lot of water on my brush I'm just going to start at the top of the canvas and stroke down and you don't want it to be solid see how you can still kind of see a lot of that black showing through and I can make my stroke kind of wider and you see that it's not a hundred percent opaque it's kind of see-through especially on the sides of it then I'm going to grab some medium magenta on my brush and kind of wipe it off with that paper towel I'm going to apply that medium magenta over that white stroke just in the middle and I'm going to stroke up and down very gently. I'm not trying to cover that white, I'm just trying to add to it so that pink and white are blending together on the canvas and it's nice and bright now because we had that white applied to it first and that pink is just adding to that sort of brilliancy of that light. So that's it for that one. If I keep going over, it's going to be solid and we're not going to, we're going to kind of lose the effect. But you really want to try to keep it dry and translucent and you want your paint to not flow very well. You want it to dry out. So I did that again and I didn't apply the white first with that. I just uh, used that color that was already on my brush and there was still white on my brush and it still created that same effect. It's a little bit more dimmer than the first one, but that's okay because with the Northern Lights we can have some uh, variation with the brightness and the dimness and the lights. So this one over here, I painted it again and it's a little bit more dimmer because I didn't have a lot of paint on my brush that time. So I have three lights in the sky and I'm going to go ahead and rinse my brush off because I'm going to use the brilliant yellow green color next. And you can do this in other colors too besides the pink and the green you can do this in maybe a turquoise or a blue color 
So I'm going to load it in the green, kind of wipe it off. So the trick is you really don't want a lot of paint on your brush here. So you want to wipe it off on your palette or your paper towel so it's nice and dry. So you can add a little bit of white in there as well. So kind of the same thing, start at the top, stroke down, it should run dry. And you can change the thickness of it by turning your brush. So if you kind of turn the brush on its side, your stroke would be a little bit more thinner versus if you turned it full width. And this northern light kind of split off into two sections here. I'll do a little bit of green on the right side of the canvas, but this one's not going to touch the ground. It's just to be, it's going to be kind of floating up in the air. So that's a really fun technique that you can do. Super simple if you want a Northern Lights background on a black canvas. That was super easy. And so I'm going to rinse off this three quarter wash brush and set it to the side. Um, I'm going to do splatter snow effects next with a toothbrush. So you could do this with a toothbrush or you can do this with just tapping two brushes together. But what I am going to do is I'm going to load this in some white paint and I like to water it down slightly because if it's just the thick white paint, it's going to splatter big old globs of white paint and it's not going to do the splatter effect. If I make it too watery, it's going to drip everywhere and get all yucky and not very fun. So I found a way to do this. So you dip your finger in the water first, apply it to the dried toothbrush, and then tip your finger in the white paint and apply it to the toothbrush. So that gives it the right consistency, but I would test it out first off your canvas to make sure that your white has it splattering the way you want to. So if you angle this different ways, you'll get kind of different techniques. If you get closer, you get your splatters um, kind of more denser versus if you hold it up far from the canvas, it spreads it out a little bit better. If you hold it at an angle, it might splatter a big old chunk at an angle. So there's lots of different fun, way, fun ways you can do this. I do this a lot with stars, but you can do it with snow in your paintings too. We need to wait for this to dry before going on to the next step. So with the magic of video editing, my painting is dry already. And I'm going to draw my snowman design with a chalk pencil. So this is a regular um, pencil that is has chalk. So it's a chalk pencil. I'm going to start right there in the middle of the canvas with the larger circle first and this circle is going to be overlapping that hill um, about halfway from the middle point of that hill is where that bottom of that circle is and each snowman circle gradually gets smaller and must overlap the other one so this um, middle circle was about four fingers widths high so if I took my hand and kind of measured that, the bottom one is a little bit bigger, so maybe five or six fingers wide. And so I'm sketching it out and I'm kind of going over my circle multiple times, which is okay because it's a chalk pencil that could easily erase. And this other, this top one is slightly smaller than the other one and it also slightly overlaps. So when you do your snowman, you just want to kind of make sure it, it's large. It takes up a big portion of the painting, but keep in mind that we still want room for the hat at the top and a cardinal on top of the hat. So there should be a good amount of room at the top, but we don't want our snowman to be too small to where it's not really the focus of the painting anymore unless you want to change the design of it and have other things in your painting too, that's okay. And then I'm going to do the hat. So the hat is a curved line that slightly overlaps the top part of the circle. And then um, the base of the hat has a shape. So it's kind of a rectangular shape that's kind of curved. And then the top part of the hat, two vertical lines. And actually those lines are not going to be so vertical. I'm going to make them kind of curved here in a little bit, but I'm just kind of sketching out the shape of it. 
and then so the nice thing about these chalk pencils is they erase very nicely i'm going to make the top part or the bottom part of his hat a little bit um, thinner than i just did i made it a little bit too thick so i'm just going to make it slightly more thinner at the top um, at that part and then the these lines i want to be kind of curved inwards and then so the cardinal very basic shape so it's a semi-circle that is kind of going slanted and a circle for his head a beak and he's got a little thing sticking up from his head um, kind of a triangular shape and then we have his tail and his tail is kind of a upside down triangle and then you can kind of go over the your shapes and make them bigger or smaller as you want and he has the feet the feet are slightly overlapping the top part of the hat and then we can go in and draw our snowman arms so two wavy lines and this snowman has mittens so we don't have to turn these into branches so we're just going to draw the mittens one mitten on each side so kind of a curve and his thumb And then I can go back over my snowman and redefine the shape of it. If I wanted to, I can go in and erase all my excess lines, but I'm not because I'm going to be painting this in. And as acrylic paint goes over chalk, it acts as water and it makes the chalk disappear with this pencil. Um, I'm not going to draw the tree in. I may kind of sketch it in later, but it's a little much right now with all the drawing. And I want to focus on getting that basic snowman shape painted in. And then I can kind of think about drawing my tree. So we're going to paint the snowman in next. And with the three quarter wash brush, we'll be using titanium white. And I'm going to start at the bottom and simply just paint it in. So paint circular strokes. Paint in a circle and then you fill it all in. We're not worrying about any kind of shading or anything like that right now, just painting a solid coat. If you're not getting 100% coverage right now because it's a black canvas painting, so you may have a little bit of black showing through, but that's okay, I kind of like that effect with a little bit of the black canvas showing through. And also when we go back over it, when we do our shading, we'll be applying kind of a second coat to it anyway. So it's okay if it's not 100% solid right now. We're just painting in the base layer of this. So this is the second circle, painting it in. If you don't fill your lines, or fill in the paint inside the lines all the way, that's okay. I never fill my lines in 100%. A lot of times I'll go outside of the lines of my drawing because the drawing is only supposed to be a guideline, a visual of where you're painting. And I'm not painting a coloring book in either. So it's okay to go outside the lines. And I'm just gonna add a little bit more paint there at the bottom. The next thing we're gonna do is add some shading to our circles. And we're gonna do that by uh, adding Mars Black to our palette. So this is Mars Black and we will be using a different brush. I'll be grabbing my number eight round brush and I'm gonna use that brush to mix my color gray, but I'm also gonna use that brush to apply the gray to the snow. I'm gonna get my three quarter wash brush rinsed off and set to the side here. And I'll be mixing a gray on my palette. So I grabbed a little dot of black on my brush and a big old chunk of white to make sort of a medium gray. If you have the color neutral gray value five, it's about that shade of gray. So you can even use that color if you want, if you don't want to make your gray. But I made this gray because I'll be kind of doing some different shades here. So with the number eight round brush, I'm going to start at the bottom of my snowman and just kind of stroke in a curved sort of formation down at the bottom. And I'm going to grab some more white on my brush and I'm going to allow that white to sort of blend up into the rest of the snowball. So my gray is gonna get lighter and lighter as I work up. 
and then I'm just kind of doing these curved strokes with more of that white and don't want to lose the form of it so I want to make sure my strokes are still going circular here and I'm just blending that gray back up into the rest of the snowball so I have a shadowy area on the bottom of my snow. I'm just taking this white and just sort of adding texture in there making it go curved in that sort of sphere formation here and getting it all kind of essentially adding a second layer to the white area and then you can grab a little bit more gray if you want to blend that gray back up. It doesn't have to be a perfect blend. It can be more expressive than anything because it's not a realism snowman at all. And then, so we have a darker shadowy area underneath the snowman. So you want to make a shade of gray that's a couple shades darker than the first shade of gray. So using that neutral gray value five color that I referred to earlier, about two shades darker than that. And we're just gonna take that and apply that shadow right under the bottom of the snowman with the number eight round brush. I'll do left and right strokes just underneath that bottom snow. And then I could repeat this same concept with the other two snowballs. So starting with the gray, and it doesn't even have to be the exact same shade of gray that I used at the very bottom. Because we're mixing our gray on our palette, it may not be the exact same shade of gray again. It may be slightly lighter or slightly darker, but that's okay. So we'll apply that gray in there. Just try not to get it to be too dark to begin with because then it might be kind of tricky to get it to blend back to white again. So try to get it to be lighter than darker, if that makes sense. And then, so I'm doing the same exact thing, grabbing that white after I added that initial gray and grabbing a whole big chunk of white. This part of my palette that was white has turned to a very light gray here. So I may need to refresh and um, add some more white to my palette, but that's okay. And I just took it and just did the texture thing to kind of make it round and make it look more like a snowball. Added some more white to my palette there. And then the top part is going to be white. So notice how I started the snowballs from the bottom up. That makes it look like that each snowball is overlapping the one on top of it. Versus if I started at the top one, it might have been more trickier to do the shading thing to make it look like it's overlapping. And then you just want to go in and do the exact same thing to the top part of the snowman. So starting with the gray at the bottom, blending it back to white at the top. Again, it doesn't have to be the exact same shade of gray. It can be slightly lighter, slightly darker, but try not to get it to be too dark. And this one, I decided, okay, I'm just gonna turn this into a circle and worry about the hat later because I can always make that hat overlap the circle again. I thought it would be easier just to turn it into a circle. Then I can do my shading the same way I did the other circles. And I'm just applying a second coat of white in here. Teeny tiny bit of darker gray right there on the bottom and blending it back up into the rest of the white. We're going to be doing the Christmas tree next and I have a really good tutorial on my website for how to paint these Christmas trees using three different kinds of brushes. So look that up because it's super helpful for this technique that I'm going to show you. I am going to load my palette with Hooker's Green Hue Permanent and I'll also be using that brilliant yellow green and titanium white. And I'll be using my number eight round brush for it. I'm going to lightly sketch out my tree with my chalk pencil, but I'm not going to be super detailed with it. I just want to kind of sketch out what size I want my tree, maybe kind of get a visual for how wide it's going to be. It is behind the snowman, so we don't want to overlap our snowman or anything. So we're loading our brush in the water, had it dry, and load it in with some Hooker's Green Hue Permanent. 
And so I'm just going to call this dark green. So the dark green, and we're going to start at the top, and we're going to stroke downward. I know my hand is covering right there, but we're going to stroke each branch downward so that it creates the, sh the triangular shape of the Christmas tree. And I'm, as I'm working my way down, I'm just stroking each of the branch. So they're rows of branches and stroking downwards and kind of flaring them out a little bit. And in the middle, stroking downwards, the tree is getting wider as we go down. And we're going to eventually hit that snow hill. So you want to keep going down. Just be careful because we don't want to overlap the snowman. The tree is behind the snowman. Unless you want your tree to be in front of the snowman, then you can overlap it. But I have my tree going behind the snowman. And so you want to just make sure you stop your stroke right there where that circle is. Then I'm going to grab a big old blob of that brilliant yellow green and blend it together on your palette. We're going to start this layer on the bottom. So I'm going to make the same kind of strokes. So I'm stroking down and I'm going to make rows of these strokes stroking downwards, but I'm working from the bottom of my tree to the top. And the reason why I'm working from the bottom is it's going to allow each sort of branch that's overlapping the one on top of it, it's going to make it look like it's overlapping. So grabbing this brilliant yellow green mixed with the darker green, light green mixed, mixed with dark green, do each sort of branch row starting from the bottom. And you can see that technique, that sort of effect that it's creating uh, because it's simply overlapping the row that you painted before. And so you're just stroking each branch down going to the top and there's your tree. And then I'm just going to go in and add more layers to this tree. So it's up to you how many layers of branches you want it to be. If you want it to be simplified, you can leave it like this. If you want it to be fuller with more color variation, you can keep going. And I kept going. So I did another layer with white mixed with that green. So those are those two greens. So the dark and the light green mixed with white. I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm sorry for my shaky camera there, but I'm going to start at the bottom and do the same technique. So this is a lighter layer. It's going to create more layer, more color variation, going to make my tree look fuller. So kind of the same concept, stroking downwards, working from the bottom and going towards the top. and then going back in with maybe a little bit more white. So if you want this to look like snow, you'll have to wait for this to completely dry because if I went back with solid titanium white, it would just end up mixing with the rest of the green and it wouldn't really look like snow. But if you wanted it to look more like snow, wait for all this to dry, then do a layer with the white on the same thing starting from the bottom and working your way up. Um, I don't recommend going back over it and over it like what I'm doing here. I tend to keep going over things and it just kind of overdoes it. So stop when you need to, especially since it's all wet and there's not much more we can do to it. It's just going to end up blending all together. I did a little bit more lighter green right there in the middle just to make this kind of fluff out a little bit. But then I was done with the tree. So rinse the brush off next and I'm going to do the base of the trunk of the tree next and I did that with black. If you want to do that with the brown you can. I did use brown later on in this painting for the snowman arms but for now I'm just going to do a black trunk with the black. This is Mars black and just kind of figure out where that middle part of your tree is and paint a little stump. Then we're going to continue with this black and the number eight round brush and we're going to do some of the facial features in the hat. So actually I'm going to start with the hat here and paint the hat with the Mars black. 
starting with the base of the hat. Remember that it overlaps that circle slightly. Make sure your white is dry. If it's not dry, it may end up blending with the black and turning gray, and we don't want that. We want this to be solid black so that it stands out. It may not stand out right away because we have that dark sky in the background. I'll show you something you can do. You can outline it and highlight it a little bit with the white. So I'm just painting this shape in solid. It kind of curves. And then the top part of the hat, I had the lines kind of curve inwards toward each other. And then I'm going to paint that shape in solid. Don't worry about the cardinal right now. We can always paint over it. We want to get that shape of the hat in first. Next, we're going to do the arms and the arms were done with burnt umber with a little bit of titanium mixed into that burnt umber. So rinse off the number eight brown brush and load a little bit of burnt umber and titanium white into your palette. We're going to mix about three parts brown, two parts white, just to make the brown a little bit lighter because it's a dark brown. It may not stand out very well. So I'm going to do the arms of the snowman, kind of a, a wavy line sticking out. To create this really thin line, just make sure you're loading the paint right there on the tip of your brush so that you get a thin stroke and not so much of a thick stroke. I'm going to rinse my brush off next and load it in just titanium white. I'm going to go ahead and paint the base of my mittens and also the base of the cardinal. The reason why I'm doing this is because the color red that I'll be using, which is cadmium red hue medium, is not so much of a solid opaque color. It would not be so bright against the black background. So painting the object white first and allowing the white to dry and then painting red over it will allow the color to be nice and bright and pop against that dark background, especially with that cardinal. We want that cardinal to be nice and bright and red and not so dull and dark. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm just painting the mittens in with white and I'll be painting the bird in white as well. Load my palette with some more titanium white there. So when you paint the bird in, just think about basic shapes. So we have the semicircle for the body and then we have a circle for the head. You can paint the beak as well. And the top of his head, the tail feathers, the, the tail feather, but also the top feathers on his head, the crown. I am forgetting what that part of the cardinal is called. The crest, it's the crest part of the cardinal. So just the basic shapes, you don't have to worry about details or anything and it's going to be a cartoony looking cardinal in the end so it's we don't have to worry about it looking real. I'm going to show you how to sort of outline slash highlight this hat so that it really stands out against the black. So I'll be using my number eight round brush with the white and I'm just going to load the paint right there on the tip and I'm going to loosely outline it. That means I'm not outlining the entire shape um, verbatim, but I'm just loosely applying strokes to the very edge of the shape so that it will make the hat sort of pop against the dark background. The next thing I'm going to do is paint the buttons, the coal buttons of our snowman. And this is a smaller round brush. This is a number four round brush, loading it into titanium white. And I grabbed the smaller brush because I'm doing smaller details here. So the buttons and the eyes. So the eyes are closer to the top or the bottom part of the hat. They're slightly bigger than the buttons. And our snowman's going to be looking up. So we want our eyes to be kind of in the upper part of the circle. So just under the hat. And kind of visualize where that nose is. 
I did a, a mouth next and this was a continuous line mouth that I ended up changing in the end. So if you wanted coal, coal for the mouth, so circles, you can do the circles. Um, if it helps, you could draw it with pencil first where you want your circles to be because it gets kind of awkward. Or you could do the nose first because you can see where the placement of the nose is and then you can do the mouth under the nose. But I did the nose with titanium white and the number four round brush. So just outline your nose shape and fill it in. And that nose is overlapping that hat, sticking straight up to make it look like the snowman is looking up at the bird. Then if your eyes are dry, you can paint two little dots on the eyes to give the snowman some character. If you want to have cheeks on the snowman, so if you did the continuous line thing that works with the cheeks, um, the medium magenta cheeks, if you did circles, um, the pink cheeks don't really work too well with that, but you can try it. And my pink ended up running into the black there, so I had to kind of work that in a little bit. The next thing we're going to do is load our palette with cadmium red hue medium. We're going to paint the mittens and the cardinal next. So using that number four round brush, load it in the red and paint a solid red coat over the mittens. That red will show up nice and bright because we did white as the base layer. Okay, and then you just want to go in and paint your cardinal. So starting with the semicircle shape for the body. So painting over pretty much everything that you painted with white. You can go ahead and paint over with the red besides maybe the beak. Go ahead and rinse your brush off and load it into the black. And I did the beak black at first, but it turned to, I believe, orange in the end. And I also did the legs. So do the beak next. And then do the legs. So if the legs aren't standing out, you probably need to grab some white and kind of make it a gray color. So there was black and white on my brush right there. And I just did the little legs that are kind of overlapping the top part of the hat. And then if you're brave, if you have any leftover chalk marks, you can erase it now or wait till the very end of the painting. I got impatient, so I wanted to erase those lines with my eraser. Next, I am loading my palette in cadmium orange hue. I'm going to use my number four round brush. I'm going to go ahead and paint the nose. So just a solid coat of orange over that entire shape. Next, I'm going to paint the snowflakes in the sky. And so rinse all that orange off your brush, perhaps rinse your water out as well. I know I'm notorious for having dirty water the entire paint session, but who has time to go switch your water? Actually, I shouldn't say that. It's probably a good idea to switch your water. But to do these snowflakes, this is the number four round brush, and I'm just loading my very tip of the brush into the white and doing the snowflakes. So I do like a X and then I do lines that go through the X on the tips of some of the snowflakes. There's like little V's 
Um, some of the tips have circles and you know that all, no two snowflakes are the same so you can make them all look different. You can have them going in different angles, different um, big, big ones, small ones. And really quick right here, I decided to kind of make my arm look like it's more inwards of the snowball. So I did that real quick. Um, but anyway, back to snowflakes. So you can make them all over the sky. Um, you can even do circles, just plain circles. If you have a white paint pen, that works really well for the snowflakes. So if you use the Posca paint pens. And then real quick, I painted the beak of my cardinal because I decided that beak needs to be orange later. So I painted over that black beak with the white. I'm going to go silent here for just a bit while I finish up these snowflakes. I decided to add some more white into my tree. Now that I know that tree is dry, um, I probably would have looked better with the thicker eight round brush, but I didn't switch. I just did it real quick with this really thin round brush. So I did the white starting from the bottom and working its way up. Just gives it a little indication that there's maybe some snow on the tree. And then you can go ahead and add designs on your mittens. So I like polka dots, so I did little dots on the mittens, and it's easy. Um, you can add a little highlight on the brown. So I just took that white, and on one side of the brown, I just added a white on the brown, and it gives it a little bit of highlight. Then I'm going to go in and add more details to my cardinal. So I rinsed my brush off, grabbed the black. I'm going to do the black marking that is around his eye. And then I'm going to outline a little bit of his wing. Maybe add a few strokes of black on his tail, but not a lot because it's a small bird and we really don't want that many details. And then I'm also going to paint his beak orange. So rinse the brush off, pat it dry, and grab the orange. So with these small areas, when you're rinsing and switching colors, you want to make sure that you're really wiping the brush so that we don't have drippings go down and puddle our tiny areas. So have a paper towel handy and wipe the metal part where the bristles are so that the paint the water is not going to droop down um, but then I did a white dot for his eye and then I went in and I also did a white line a highlight on the left part of the nose it can be on the right part of the left part it doesn't really matter so there's my dot for the eye and then I'll be doing the white line on the nose and then maybe a little white line on the top of his beak too And then if you want to add some texture on the nose, you can grab the black and do the curved lines on the nose, but you don't have to. It's an extra little detail that's not really necessary. And since I had this black with me, I just did a few little black lines on the bottom of the snowballs. Then I rinsed my brush off and decided I wanted some more snowflakes in the sky, but I just did dots. So I did little clusters of dots everywhere just kind of adds to the magic in the sky if you want to do ornaments on your tree you can do that so i'll show you you can just make sure your tree your tree is dry first but you can use the colors so you can use the red the orange you can add yellow to your palette and i will be adding yellow to my palette anyway because i'm going to do a star on the top of the tree but i did orange and red dots and then if you want, you can do pink in there 
or I mean if you have other colors available you can use those colors too so if you have blue or purple or turquoise you can do whatever color ornaments you want if you're doing the star at the top of the tree I did that I believe it's primary yellow and I did a few yellow ornaments first and then for the tree topper I did the sort of base of it and then sketched out the star with my paintbrush if you want you can draw your star out with a chalk pencil first I added several layers on this star because I kept making it bigger and bigger so you'll see as I'm painting it it's gro gradually growing larger but if you're having coverage issues with this yellow yellow tends to be kind of a see-through color you can mix titanium white into it and so that'll make your yellow it'll make it lighter but it would also make it more opaque then I grabbed some titanium white and I just kind of went over my star kind of in the middle to give it a little bit more depth but nothing too fancy just a little bit of white right there in the middle if you want the frosty the snowman flower on the hat I recommend painting the base shape of the flower white first waiting for that white to dry and then going back over your petals so frosty's flower is pink with yellow in the middle so you do a simple little flower and wait for it to dry and then grab pink and go over your petals and then do that yellow thing in the middle Over on the cardinal, I decided to add a few little strokes of white just kind of on the right side of it. And then you can loosely outline some of the petals if you want your flower to stand out a bit. But this is just the part of the painting where you're adding touch ups. Maybe our star is twinkling, so a few little lines kind of radiating from the star. But that is it. This how to paint a magical snowman painting tutorial is coming to its conclusion I am going to go ahead and sign my name this is one of those tiny detail brushes with titanium white and then also if you have any chalk lines still showing from your drawing um, wait for your painting to dry all the way then you can go in and erase it or you can also get a wet paintbrush a clean wet paintbrush and erase any chalk lines that are sort of sticking out of the drawing but that's it this is the conclusion of how to paint a magical snowman i hope you enjoyed painting with me and thanks for watching